Welcome back everybody and today we're talking about a carbon fiber heat moldable saddle. That's right, you heard me correctly, a saddle that you can custom fit to your butt with the help of electricity. Now, you guys know that I'm not the kind of person that brings you the shiny unboxing videos. No, I will literally sit on stuff until I'm ready to talk about what I like and what I don't like about a product. As a result, many of the items that I do feature and ride will not be hot off the production line, but I've put in some hard effort to bring you my honest opinion. We're going to look at a relatively new saddle on the market from the founders of Lanyot Bikes down in Vancouver, British Columbia called Reform. Now, this unique saddle has a layer of carbon fiber that's thermal molds to the contours of your bottom. It's a patented design that takes some guesswork out of finding the right saddle for you. Now, full disclosure, while I do buy almost everything that I ride every so often, manufacturers do reach out to me and send me something free to test. Reform did supply me with this saddle that I'm going to show you with no deadline, no input, and no expectations. My reviews are of my own salty opinions, good or bad, about all the products that I talk about. So at the time that I received this saddle from Reform, they were only making one model, the Seymour model, which is available in only one size. Measuring 142 millimeters wide, the short nose design has 7 by 10 millimeter carbon rails and is leather covered with a slight amount of foam. And now as a result, this thing weighs only 197 grams, which is pretty impressive for this saddle. And obviously with its shapes geared a little bit more towards roadies and fast gravel riding. Now I'll be honest, these saddles are not cheap at almost $450 Canadian, but that is in line with similar lightweight racing saddles that you'll find on the market. And what is? the price of a perfect saddle. Hmm. You be the judge for that. The saddle comes in a wonderful wooden box that you can repurpose rather than throwing it out. And inside, you'll find the saddle, a heating adapter, and a nice little storage bag. And Reform also provides a prepaid shipping bag so that you have the option to return the heating ad adapter for a $50 refund so that you can help reduce any e-waste generated. You'll also find instructions for saddle care and the molding process. Before we get into the molding process and what I think about this saddle, if you're new here to this channel, my name's Robert and many people call me Salty Beard. I'm here to bring you along on all of my adventures, pass along some cycling knowledge to help you enjoy life on your bicycle. The process for this is pretty simple, but there are some things that you have to consider that will greatly improve your molding session. It's best to mount your bike that you intend to ride on a stationary trainer. Unfortunately, in my case, I had to improvise a little as my current bike with a through axle doesn't mount to the trainer I have. I took the time to set my saddle back up on this other bike and then mounted it onto the trainer. I did find in practice that you get actually better results wearing just a simple pair of underwear than your cycling shorts. To start, there are a few things that you need to gather. One of them is an audible timer that you will have within reach while you ride, such as a phone, works pretty well. Refer to the supply chart to determine how long you will need to heat the saddle depending on your room temperature and what kind of shorts you're wearing. Ensure that the power adapter is switched off before you do any of this. And once you inspect the saddle and the connector that's free of debris, then go ahead and plug your adapter into the wall. The connector that goes on the saddle is magnetic and will only connect in one position, which is with the cable facing the rear. Once you're all set up, get on your bike, find that comfy position on the saddle. Then turn on your power switch and your timing device at the exact same time and start pedaling at a nice, easy, smooth pace. Once your timer sounds off, go ahead and turn off the power or simply pull away the magnetic connector, but be careful that the cord is clear of any of your drive chain. Now, the rest of this is pretty simple. Continue to pedal for at least another six minutes, altering your riding position about every 30 seconds during the entire six minutes. I simulated riding on my aero bars by dropping down, but in retrospect, I probably should have just mounted the aero bars on my bike. 
Now, as you can see, after the molding process, my saddle has two distinct dents and mounds in the carbon fiber shell, along with a very slight sag to the center of the saddle. And now a word from our sponsor. That would be me. Head on over to Caves and Coves TT, links down below. This is a unique photo-based bikepacking race that's here on North Vancouver Island. That's 1,350 kilometers and over 19,000 meters of elevation. Yeah, TT stands for tough tour. So bring your camera, bring your legs. You're gonna need both. Register now. Well, now let's talk about comfort and ride. And for a brand new saddle, I was really surprised on how close it felt to my well-worn Brooks Swift that I have. Well, my first rides on this were mostly commuting and they felt very enjoyable. But I did notice that these uh, sharp edges on the side were a bit abrupt and I did notice them when my thigh was rubbing on here. But overall, this was a really comfortable saddle. However, this is where things started to go a little bit pear-shaped. Anything more in two or three hours, and it just wasn't fun. So I tweaked the saddle position fore and aft and leveled it out and even remolded the saddle once more, but I just could not get this comfortable enough for long distances. So after about 500 kilometers, I chalked it up to being not my shape of a saddle and proceeded to hang this up on the wall. But the story doesn't end here. So when I built my new gravel bike, I decided to give the reformed saddle another shot. And to my surprise, it felt like an entirely different saddle on this bike, in a good way. So I gave it another remolding, and wow, what a difference. I found that on my road bike with my pelvis rotated forward, this saddle almost disappeared underneath me with almost zero pressure, and the shape was perfect for this riding position, even, even better when I was in my aero bars. Well, I, I swapped this back onto my mountain bike and as I expected, it was not comfortable. So it's not really good for riding upright. Now the Seymour model is geared towards a roadie position, so what else should I expect? But guess what? Reform has brought another saddle, it's called the Tantalus, and it's designed for mountain biking and gravel. It's similar construction, but with seven millimeter titanium rails. It's the same width as a Seymour, slightly shorter and weighs a mere 235 grams. The edges of the Tantalus are a lot smoother and they roll down nice. So it should be very comfortable, especially when you're sliding back and forth in technical terrain. The shape reminds me very much of a very little bit shorter version of a classic Salitalia flight saddle. Well, if you like what you're watching, why not give this video a nice little thumbs up for me and maybe even subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. And if you'd like to help me create, you could even buy me a coffee following this link up here. Now I have almost 10,000 kilometers on this Seymour saddle and I can report that there's almost no wear on it at all. I thought for sure these sides here after a, some typical mountain biking abuse of tossing it through the woods and having a few crashes up against some trees, that I would at least damage the sides, but there's no wear and tear on this. The saddle has not sagged or deformed in any way since the first day that I shaped it, uh, which is great. Well, I have to say that I'm really impressed with the reform saddle. It's comfort, it's longevity, it's putting up to the abuse, it's not deforming, and it is super light. So this saddle has now become my favorite all day road saddle and gravel saddle. But I think I'm gonna save my trusty old Brooks for bike packing trips when I'm out mountain biking. But then again, maybe I need to be testing out their Tantalus model, just to be sure. So until next time, be safe. Later.